was wide open. After the turn, he's got a man. Harper going deep. Caught. Welcome, everyone. We have an in depth show for you today as I break down injuries, quarterback position, offensive line, and more. And I also tell you two players I feel will have breakout years for the Huskers this coming season. And finally, I have big recruiting news to tell you. So make sure you stay until the end as you don't want to miss that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click on notifications. That way you don't miss any Husker news, especially with the season just two weeks away. Now, on the injury front, we just got some bad news as linebacker Javen Wright is out indefinitely from an unknown health condition, which sounds like to me it's not football related. It sounds like it's something else going on. It might not even be physical, if you know what I mean. So right now he's out indefinitely, which means he could easily come back, but he might not. So we'll just keep an eye out and, and see how that goes. But this also puts a strain on that position. That was already a position of one of the weaker sides, uh, or, or I should say one of the lack of depth. And so this puts a really kind of puts a strain on that position. Uh, but Rule kind of feels good about it. He actually said he feels really good about the position, that uh, Vincent Shavers is doing well. And you got uh, Micah Bear, Stephen Thompson, Gage Stinger, and Vincent Genitone. All of them, he said, are doing extremely well. So he stated that he's confident that this team has the depth and the talent uh, at this position to not miss a beat. Now, this also means that Vincent Chambers probably will not redshirt. Not saying he was going to anyway, but it probably definitely guarantees he won't because he's going to need to get plenty of reps and development. This young man might not have redshirted anyway, but as I feel he's going to be a force at this position and probably going to work his way into a permanent stay uh, and, and not end up getting to be redshirt. Now, the good news is Rule stated that they came out pretty healthy, that the rest of the team was healthy. There's no other injuries to note. And um, But on the linebacker position, he just feels like um, Vincent Shavers and the rest of them, they won't, you won't miss uh, right that much. It's a shame that this young man went down. But he goes, you shouldn't see any difference. And he said that's why they practice like they practice or they practice three hours a day instead of like an hour and a half. This way, everyone gets the same number of reps and development from the first string or the first team to the last thir third team. So, and this is how Tom Osborne used to do it. I remember this is the way he did it. Everybody got reps. This is the reason why a walk-on player like Matt Terman was able to come in and play and run that offense in 1995 when both Frazier and Beringer went down that year. So, Rule has no doubt that these young guys will be able to pick up the slack and do very well at linebacker. <clears throat> now, Rule also discussed the quarterbacks. As he stated, they'll be making a decision on the starter probably either Wednesday or Thursday of this week. And I also noticed when Rule talks about the quarterbacks in the quarterback room, he always talks about only three. He feels good about the three. That's what he said. So to me, does that mean... Jalen Grimstead is not a factor in the quarterback room and not a factor in the quarterback decision. Is he that far behind the playbook and knowing what he needs to do that most likely he's going to redshirt this year? I don't think it's talent. I really don't. What do you guys think? After his what he's done so far in his career, I don't think it has anything to do with talent. I've noticed he has a great arm. He has great arm talent. And he makes really good decisions on the fly. He also brings that running factor when he plays, kind of like what you see in uh, Heinrich Harburg, but with a more polished passing game. So with Rule talking about only three, then to me that's probably already been decided that Grimstead probably will redshirt unless injury decides otherwise. Rule also talked about how both freshmen – uh, quarterbacks are mentally good and ready. And someone asked him about Danny Kalen to give him some, uh, you know, kind of give him his feel on Danny. And he said Danny has that it factor, if you know what I mean. He just has that it factor. He talks about how he has two elite, got two elite quarterbacks, and that he feels like both these quarterbacks will end up playing in the NFL. 
one day. And so Danny's just probably not as, well, he's definitely not, he's just not as physically developed as Riola. So I think that might be the reason why you see him end up redshirting. So I expect Kalen not to play unless really needed, uh, but unless someone really gets hurt. If he gets hurt, then probably will play. They'll probably keep him to four games. They're going to try to probably keep him to four games if that happens, and then redshirt him. But if not, that'd be the only way I see him not redshirting. But Rule does see both of these players someday uh, in the NFL. The Big Ten Network also came in on their annual breaking down each team segment, and they came into Lincoln, and the one thing they brought up and said that caught my eye was they talked about this was the best quarterback room they've seen throughout their stops, and it's a, that's a big thing compared to what we saw last year. I mean, just the difference between last year and this year is just night and day. Um, they also said they noticed Rule spending more time developing this year and less time on explaining how things are done and his reasoning for why he runs the things in the way he does, which he did a lot last year. So that means to me the team has bought in to what Rule is doing. And, of course, the track record Rule has proves that. Now, Rule was also asked about the left tackle position, and he was really pleased at what he's seen. He's confident in Turner Corcoran and that Gunner and Grant are looking really good as solid backups. But to me, either way, if we lose Turner Corcoran, then the Huskers are going to be in real trouble on that left side. But there's no doubt that Corcoran could have easily won this position anyway, and to me probably would have won this position. I had him in my top five. Uh, returning lineman coming back this year, but uh, he was in a battle with him and Teddy, and I believe Corcoran would ended up winning winning the business anyway. Now, kind of staying on that same factor, the Outland Trophy watch list came out <clears throat> as well, and I noticed tackle Bryce Benhart was third on this list, which kind of surprised me considering the struggles Bryce had last year. But if he puts together a season, they feel like he could have this line i mean look out this line will do something because i'm telling you to me their best lineman on this offensive line is micah mazuka now micah mazuka didn't make the list but to me should have probably been on that list as he has shown to me that he's probably the best offensive lineman in that room and that it, that's saying something considering the experience the huskers bring back on that offensive line to me he's definitely their best pro prospect out of all of them so this is an offensive line that's going to be great, a great plus and a strength for the Huskers with potentially three of these offensive linemen being drafted next year in Ben Hart, Mazuka, and Ben Scott. Now, in other news, Rule talked about the depth at running back. He stated that they have five guys that have made great strides and all can do the job, but they need to just have one or two of them separate themselves from the pack because he said he kind of brought up that you can't play with five running backs. It's just kind of not feasible to play with five running backs during the game. And that he would like to have a solid two running backs with a little split there, maybe 20 carries on one, 12 on the other, something like that, with a third running back in special situations. So he needs a couple of them to take control of that running back room and get a step ahead and and show themselves uh, for Rule and them. Now, when he asked, Rule stated that they have already been working on things for the first four games of the schedule. Someone asked him if they've already been starting on UTEP, and he said, we've been working on things for the first four games. That's UTEP, Colorado, Northern Iowa, and Illinois. He said the players don't know it, but they've been throwing in situations that they want to use in all four of these games. He also stated that the goal is to start preparing for game one on Wednesday, the 21st this week, which tells me that's probably when they'll announce the starting positions on all positions um, as they're going to start putting a game plan together. Also, during Saturday's scrimmage, he, he talked about they, they ran 137 plays and he felt the team did well, looked good, but that they're a long ways and still not quite there yet. He talked about how the first team didn't turn the ball over, but had some crucial penalties at some of the worst times. And then he talked about the second squad 
would come in and turn the ball over. They turned the ball over four times. So you can see that everybody still has some work to do, and they better get on the ball and get it cleaned up because there's only two weeks away before that game one. He was also asked about special teams and specifically the kickers. And Rule stated that uh, John Hall is really looking good. And right now, Tristan Alvano is still not 100%. So the kicking job is going to go down to either John Hall or Nico Ottomanelli. He also stated that Brian Buscini has picked it up and has looked really good these last few practices and is punting. Now, my take on the cornerback position. After watching the cornerback positions get in the field, I think I already know who these starters are going to be. And I already got game the second starter next to Tommy Hill. I feel that Marquise Buford will now get the number two spot at corner with Charles right behind him. Now, Bly Hill's working his way in. He's still a few weeks away uh, before he's ready and will work his way into the lineup. But right now, he's still uh, taking it easy. And I don't think Rule's going to push him. Uh, that's just the way rule is. So when the starting positions come out this week, plan on seeing Tommy Hill being corner number one with Marquise Buford being corner number two. You you watch it. Now, I also feel like you're going to see a couple of players break out this year. And this is what I talked about at the beginning of the video. My two players that will have breakout seasons will be tight end Thomas Badoni and wide receiver Isaiah Nair. Both are in their second year after ACL injuries. And like I've always said, and I've seen it forever throughout all of football, college, pro, it's year number two after this particular injury before they let loose and play to their full potential. I see it all the time, including the NFL. So to me, both Bodonia and Nair, who are now going in the second year after that injury, are going to have monster years in 2024. You just watch. Now, on the recruiting side, I talked to Michael Terry's people down in San Antonio, and it seems like the plan now is to have Terry to make a trip to Lincoln during the Colorado game, which would be huge for Nebraska. Now, normally these players don't do that. They don't usually take a lot of games during the season, and mainly because it's hard for them to make them Saturday games uh, during their season. Um, Unless it's like a local team, like Terry could probably run down and see Texas easily, but it's really hard for him to go anywhere else. But since the Colorado game is a prime time game, this gives Terry plenty of time to catch a flight in time for that game uh, on Saturday night. So that's their goal is to get him down, let him watch that game on Saturday night against Colorado. And if this happens, guys, I'm telling you, I'm pushing my pick closer to Nebraska. Now, right now, I have my pick for Terry going to Oregon. I know a lot of people have him at Texas. I have him going to Oregon with the Huskers right behind at number two and Texas being a close third. And I think Texas is only in there just because of where they're located. Other than that, they probably would be eliminated to me right now. So to me, it's probably Oregon, then Nebraska. But if they get him on campus during that Colorado game, I could then see Nebraska grab him. So I think it's time for us to get excited about this season. It's less than two weeks away. So stay tuned for more updates. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like as it really pushes this video out to other Husker fans and really helps me a lot. I'd really appreciate it. Until the next video, guys, go Big Red.